Good afternoon, everybody, officially, and welcome to this uh, Creative Zone webinar in partnership with Invest Qatar and the rest of the entities part of this uh, of today's session, which is from the Qatar Financial Center, the Qatar Science and Technology Park, and the Qatar Free Zone Authority. With us, we have uh, Mohamed Al Mula. He's a specialist uh, investor relations at Invest Qatar. Uh, Hamad Al Nasser, a senior associate at the Qatar Financial Center and Wala Amer, engagement manager at the Qatar Science and Technology Park. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for, for being with us today. It's a real pleasure to be able to have you with us. The pleasure, the pleasure is ours, Lauren. So thank you guys very much for this. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. And uh, so today's session is all about doing business in Qatar and the different sort of structures and formats by which uh, new investors and business owners can come and operate a business uh, from Qatar uh, or in Qatar. My name is Lorenzo Juris. I am the CEO of Creative Zone. We're the largest business setup company in the region. We have offices in Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and the UAE. Uh, we've been operating in the UAE for the last uh, 12 years. And now we started our operations in Qatar the last year or so very successfully due to the immense interest that there is in Qatar at the moment. So perhaps uh, to get started, um, today we have a, a special presentation conducted by Mr. Mohamed Ab uh, Al Mula on sort of Qatar's value proposition. We're going to be sharing a screen and a presentation, and he's going to be touching on some of these aspects on why Qatar and what's the value that Qatar can provide to new investors looking at the re into investing in this region. Mohamed, we, we, we leave it with you. Thank you, Lorenzo, for an introduction, and yes. Start. Good afternoon. Thank you, Lorenzo, once again, and good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this session. It's both a pleasure and an honor to speak with you all today. And uh, the purpose of this presentation is basically for me to aim and provide, aiming to provide you with a quick and informative introduction um, for all of you on the investment promotion agency and the opportunities that Qatar has to offer and how we play this role in achieving the success for you guys. If we can jump to the next slide a little bit, please. So the Invested Promotion Agency, also known by the brand name Invest Qatar, is a brand that was solely made to showcase Qatar as an exceptional investment destination. And in doing so, we have become the responsible agency for promoting and playing an active role when it comes to coordination and facilitating international investment to the state. And we also ensure a smooth path for investors to access opportunities in Qatar by bringing together the full investment ecosystem under one roof. And this also allows us to connect you with the right people and the organization that, part, that partners with you throughout your journey, let's say. Finally, it's also very beneficial to state that we are, very young, we are a young organization, but a very well-connected one as we strategically work extensively between invest, investors and existing licensing platforms here in the country, but not just that, also entities and local champions and ministries without, within this country, which allows us to connect very easily with them and display, let's say, entail certain information that we would like to share with these entities that may assist you in your future and let's say establishing a business or expanding your business even in Qatar. Such uh, licensing platforms and ministries like Ministry of Commerce, Qatar Financial Center, QFZ, QSTP. Now I can entail more about these entities, but we have them joined with us within the session. Therefore, they'll be able to discuss more on this matter with you guys. Um, if we jump on to the next slide, please, Olivia. So Qatar is one of the most stable, resilient, and competitive, has one of the comp most competitive economies in the world. And they're boasting with a world-class climate for business and investment. And that's due to the fact that there is a variety of competitive fiscal investments, such as having, for instance, 100% foreign ownership or zero to 10% corporate tax, or even zero tax on personal income. But also, it's a case-by-case -case scenario. Therefore, there are some exam exemptions from cost duties as well. Now, these are just such such. These are just part of the things that that we have. Let's say in terms of fiscal incentive. But I'm sure there is much more that other entities can display more about or talk more about to you guys on. If we jump on the next one, please, Olivia. Yeah. So. Um, we are also in Qatar, we're also very considered to be one of the countries to have a very business friendly environment with a variety of resources available. And that's because we're having a stable and resilient economy, number one. Uh, we're maintaining one of the highest GDP per capita levels globally. Uh, for instance, we're also considered to be one of the top three in the Arab, Arab, Arab World and Global Inter Entrepreneurship Index. 
We also offer a vibrant knowledge ecosystem and very rich in culture. As you know, Qatar is focusing a lot on becoming the next sports destination. You may know that we're hosting the World Cup. I'm sure very, everyone is very much familiar with this. Uh, but we also have a very competitive regime with conducive business environments. And if I had a final statement to state is that we offer an unparalleled market, market access and connectivity. Uh, thanks to Hamad International Airport in Qatar, it was allowing people to be connected with over 140 international destinations being the gateway to the world. And also Hamad Port being one of the largest green ports in the world as well. Next slide, please, Olivia. Now, Qatar's ecosystem also provides a wide variety of supports for companies operating in the country through both key international programs and also several investment incentives operated by different entities. For example, if we wanna talk about national programs, open, we, there are a couple for foreign investors, like I said earlier, for example, the PPP on Drajlal, or let's say special economic zones, Qatar FinTech Hub, Tesmo Qatar project program, which is like the replica of Silicon Valley for this, for this region, let's say. We have Qatar Research Development Innovation Council, QRDI, Monopoly being one of them as well, and then also Qatar National Research Fund. I can tell more to you guys about this further on in the future, let's say, but other stuff to cover is that the fact that there is a, several invest, investment incentives operated by different entities as well. For instance, if we're talking about Ministry of Commerce, they offer a range of investment incentives, including land allocation, import duty exemptions for certain machinery, let's say, and equipment, we have Qatar National Research Fund where they offer a range of mechanisms from reviewing your feasibility study and supporting you with the necessary funding or even providing you with legal and, legal and financial advisory services. Qatar Development Bank, they provide funding opportunities in the academic, public and private sectors to foster research in private and priority sectors as well. Um, you have uh, QSTP that I do not need to speak much of again, because we have a lot here that we'll be sharing more about it later, but they also fund opportunities for local and international tech founders and entrepreneurs. And then next slide, please. Yeah, and then these are just to conclude, let's say my this presentation with you guys. Um, these are just some stuff that we, we can provide you or some services that we provide that can help future investors, such as uh, feeding you guys with information on investment opportunities or feeding information on the business regulatory environment, or even connecting you to other organizations in the investment ecosystem, supporting investors in many ways, because it's not just about uh, the investor wanting to establish themselves in the country, and that's it. It's also about current investors that are located in the country and them being part of the aftercare program and how we can take care of them after that like let's say them facing certain issues in the country <clears throat> we would support them going further or connecting with certain entities that are they're facing issues and and so on the there is no limit to what we do in terms of supporting but that's pretty much it uh, the ipa in a nutshell invest qatar i hope i was very clear with you guys and thank you guys very much Excellent, excellent, Mohammed. Thank you so much for that. And uh, maybe before we let you go, I know that, and I can see a few questions uh, coming in, and, and and I will suggest and encourage that <coughs> if anybody that has any questions throughout today's session, please feel free to put them here on the chat uh, section or in the Q and A section of of the application, and we will be reading some of those as we go along. We will pick up the ones that are more relevant to to the topic that is at hand and that, <coughs> that we're discussing. But but please. Uh, send us your questions or we'll try to read those as we come along. There's one question in particular that talks about, you know, the kind of support that Invest Qatar can do. And it relates to this issue of, of, you know, helping people partner up with the right partners on the ground. You touched about the incentives and the support that you could give. I mean, this is a very, uh, a, one of the most sought after questions that we get all the time that we do <clears> these type of sections uh, or, or type of webinars. So on this topic of incentives and support, <coughs> is there sort of a link or a website that users can go there, there, and have a... Yeah. So there is not, let's say, a specific cer certain amount or let's say cer certain thing in terms of incentives. It's always a case-by-case -case scenario, Lorenzo. But, uh, and it's it's mostly, uh, let's say, incentives that are that are within each entity, let's say, a licensing platform, which I'm sure my team, my colleagues here will later follow up more about. But in regards to... A certain link i would really recommend them to visit our website if anything there's a specific member if they visit our website put their note let's say or let's say they have a certain question they would like us to answer which is investcatar.com 
if they follow up within that website, we can follow up straight away because we get this. We have a certain team here within the investor relations team that focus on answering these questions and they can follow up directly in terms of, let's say, whether it's connecting you with a certain platform that can feed you up on more about these incentives or even them uh, entailing more details about these incentives because we do have a certain team within both IR and the strategy department within Vescatar that can, that can support you on this, definitely. Excellent. And as we saw also <clears> on your <throat> slide, there's an email, info at investcatar.ua exactly. exactly. that people can write and, and connect with you and ask more details on this. And I can hear that uh, many of, of the people present to here today and their own, that each of the sort of licensing jurisdictions have their own incentives and their own programs to, to support the investors that are looking <laughs> particularly at this, these places, right? Yeah, exactly, indeed. Great. And we see there that our team has put the, the link to, to your website. Well, Mohammed, uh, we know that you have some other commitments. Thank you so much for today. And Thank you we for will having continue me. Thank with, you the, with the rest. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you for today. So, voila, Hamad. And now we have Abdul Hadi. Abdul Hadi, uh, welcome and uh, good afternoon. And thank you for joining us. Is your good sound afternoon. okay? We didn't. Abdul Hadi, you're there? You are on mute. Uh... Okay, I think, ah, there we go. Yeah, we can hear you, I think it's unmuted. Can you hear us? No, it's still, uh, still no sound from, from your side. Um, I, I guess uh, while Abdul Hadi is uh, working on his technical issues. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll give I, it some I, time. I, we'll give it some time. So we continue with the rest. So we have 105 attendees that I can see. Um, let, let's get right it, to it. We have a good panel discussion. We want to get started. There was a good presentation there by Mohammed. Uh, maybe Wala, I'd like to start with you, uh, you know, as the representative of the Qatar Science and Technology Park. How, how can we explain what's the sort of what is being lived in Qatar at the moment in terms of its current economic uh, landscape uh, ahead of the World Cup, a massive event that is coming up. There's been a, an incredible push for new infrastructure development in the country. What, what kind of uh, uh, paint you can give us of, of what's happening in the Qatar at the moment? So oh, I think, um, first of all, thank you very much, Lorenzo and Invest Qatar for this fantastic opportunity. We are honored to be here and we hope to, uh, to enlighten people with more information on Qatar and why it's a great place to invest uh, and expand their businesses in the region. With that said, we all know that Qatar for many, many years has relied heavily on oil reserves um, and being the number one top LNG exporter. However, in the past years, the government uh, has developed economic policies to diversify the economy, and they've increased private and foreign investment um, in non-energy sectors, uh, such as financial services. As you can see, as QMB has risen uh, throughout the years, uh, whether it's Oridu and telecom with our 5G network, health, uh, education, sports, and tourism. Um, I think that we have a, uh, a strong economy um, I think as the IMF has predicted this year, we're, you know, even in crisis, our GDP is increasing with over 3%. Um, and we have, we have a lot of, of, of support policies and procedures uh, that the government has put in place to protect uh, foreign investment. Excellent, excellent. And, and if we touch a little bit upon the Qatar Science and Technology Park, what some some of the key initiatives that you have been putting in place towards you know, supporting uh, FDI's inflows into the country? So first of all, uh, Qatar Science Technology part is part of Qatar Foundation. We're part of an incredible ecosystem of um, homegrown universities and international universities such as Texas A&M, Cornell. Uh, we also have our research institutes with energy, biobank, genome, and over the past 14 years, uh, we're the oldest free zone in Qatar. We were established in 2005 by Amiri Decree. We've been able to develop a unique environment to provide multinationals and SMEs with the framework to allow them to develop and research technologies. Um, recently, we've shifted our focus and we are, we are attracting companies who are focused in climate change, sustainability, energy, health, digital tech. 
Uh, and while we do this, we're also creating a diverse and dynamic entrepreneurship ecosystem to support startups through incubation, funding, acceleration, and growth programs. Excellent. Well, we would like to go a little bit deeper on some of these programs. I'll start now with uh, Hamad. Hamad, uh, good afternoon. Thank you for joining as well. And uh, same first question. What's, what, what is being lived in Qatar? How do you see the current economic landscape? What's a little bit of, of, of the work that has been done uh, at the Qatar Financial Center in these last uh, couple of years? Brothers, we're meant to. Uh, uh, good afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, thank you, Lorenzo. Uh, uh, hi, Abdul Hadi. We can hear you, actually. Right now, we can hear you. Uh, how are you, Abdul Hadi? Um, uh, yeah, back to your question. Thank you, uh, Lorenzo. Uh, uh, and and for Creative Zone for uh, creating you know this webinar, um, I see uh, hundred uh, plus participants um, from across the world, from Sydney, from Morocco. Um, hello to everyone. I'm Hamid Al Nasser from the Qatar Financial Center. Um, I think you have a good question about you know like how is the business uh, landscape from Qatar, and maybe um, people living in Qatar would take it for granted but like for international or, or or like you know for the viewers from outside i think it's good to look at qatar i think from a macro level um, qatar is a resource wealthy country and more specifically in oil and gas i think where qatar stands out is in natural gas uh, there is no doubt uh, qatar is currently the largest natural gas liquefied natural gas lng exporter in the world and has is, it has the third largest uh, reserves of natural gas in the world. Such a small country, but has immense opportunity. This is why Qatar is consistently ranked among the fastest growing economies in the world. Qatar is also underway of expanding its LNG exports by 60%. Wow. I think there is no doubt that Qatar is only growing and growing. And underpinned by, of course, the wise uh, leadership and the Qatar National Development Plans, the, the country is re-injecting this wealth into healthcare, into infrastructure, uh, food security, even in the education system, you can see an Ivy League uh, university in Qatar. I mean, it, it really boils down to what does this mean for business? And th this rapid development really planted a lot of local champions, so local champions that were that started in Qatar but emerged, you know, let me call them as champions. So in the in the telecom sector, I'll give you a few, a few examples. You have a company such as Uridu. It is um, our national uh, uh, telecommunications provider. It has now I cannot count how many branches outside of Qatar. You have our IC, uh, like in the ICT sector, you have champions in Malumatia, such as Malumatia. In financial services, you have Qatar National Bank. Uh, Qatar National Bank now is the strongest banks or one of the strongest banks in the region. In the, in the transport sector, you have you know, the famous uh, Qatar Airways, you have uh, Q terminals, you have a company called uh, Milaha. In energy, of course, you have uh, Qatar Energy, uh, Qatar Gaz. So what, I mean, the question begs itself is what is common among all these you know, champions in Qatar? Really, like all of them have projects. All of these projects require financing. All of these projects require ex expertise. You know, with, with such a pace of development, you would require expertise from abroad. So mm -hmm. we see a lot of companies that are registered, you know, register their company in QFC and provide services uh, for these champions in Qatar. We have, uh, mm -hmm. you know, banks setting up, uh, mm -hmm. Bank of China, Sumitomo Bank from Japan, also in the non-financial sector, we see a lot of uh, big companies uh, register, such as uh, Uber. Uh, in the technology side, you have uh, WePro, uh, Infosys, uh, Tech Mahindra. All of these companies found opportunity in Qatar um, mm. and decided, you know, to set up a company. Mm. Really, Qatar is a is a great place to do business and. Mm. We noticed, like I noticed personally, that all of these big firms in Qatar are requiring or asking their service providers to have a local company to set up. Mm. Um, I think it's, uh, every company has its own procedure, but they require companies that want to do business in Qatar to have a local company. Um, mm. I think this is where QFC can help. Um, QFC has established more than uh, 1,500 companies. Uh, we register non-financial companies, um, you know, the regular technology companies, professional services companies, 
um, and much, much more. Mm -hmm. We also actually are a place where you can set up a financial company. So mm -hmm. if you'd like to set up a bank, you know, like I said, all these projects in Qatar require financing. And we mm -hmm. saw a lot of banks doing really good um, in Qatar. So in the Qatar Financial Center, you can also set up a bank, you can set up an uh, insurance company, you can set up an asset management company. Um, again, I, I would leave this discussion casual, but if you want to uh, reach out to QFC, we are always available with, through our website or, or through uh, uh, all the social media platforms. What is quite interesting as well is when, when I first came to Qatar and started understanding the different uh, you know, uh, licensing jurisdictions, it was a surprise to me and to understand that uh, QFC has non-regulated and regulated activities by which investors can, uh, can obtain a license from. We're going to be touching a little bit uh, more into that. And also we want to know, and I'm sure the, the, the viewers of today want to know, how easy is it for investors to start a business? What are the steps? What are the procedures? We'll get to that. I want to pass on to Abdul Hadi for, for a little now. I think uh, your, your sound is, is fixed now, it's correct. Abdul Hadi yes. from the Qatar Free Zone Authority, also a major licensing option in the country. Tell us a little bit more, what is the Qatar Free Zone Authority and a little bit on, on some of your latest projects. Hi all, firstly, I apologize for the technical difficulties. Uh, just to get straight to it, Qatar Free Zone Authority was established in 2017 by an Emiri decree. So we haven't been uh, operational for too long. We have two zones. One is 36 kilometers square and is located in the south of Qatar, which is more of our heavy industry zone. And the other one is the Rasko Fontas zone, which is located close to the airport. It's around six kilometers square. And here we focus on logistics and emerging techs. So like my colleagues already discussed, each zone offers specific benefits to its investors. With our zone, we offer state-of-the-art infrastructure for the investors to come move their operations, their research and development, whatever they see fit for our zone. To, their free, to our free zone, what we help them from A to Z in their operations, from starting up their facility, licensing, to opening a bank account. So we try to help, especially as a foreign investor in a new country, we try to help them set up their business as soon as possible and get starting with what, with what they need to. Mm -hmm. Another point I'd like to touch at, which are my colleagues uh, from the different organizations throughout Qatar, uh, Qatar didn't mention, was Qatar's geographical advantage. I think that's an important note to, to bring up here as in Qatar, we're within eight hours flying time for, to support 60% of the world and five days sailing time. So a lot of our investors tend to move some of their manufacturing here just to streamline their supply, their supply chain, which I think is a massive benefit, which we offer to our investors. And a geographical advantage isn't something you can recreate in other places around the world. It's something unique to Qatar. And Qatar has taken full advantage of that with the, the facilities in place, like Hamad International Port and uh, HIA and Qatar Airways being one of the largest cargo freight providers in the world. This is an excellent point. And I, I, again, I was very surprised to hear on this topic that Qatar Airways is the biggest cargo freight company in the world. I mean, this possibility of a lot of companies from the Western world that want to you know, uh, use Qatar as their, you know, hub for distribution of products into the Middle East, into Africa, into the rest of, let's say, Asia. It's, it's a key opportunity having Qatar Airways and that support. And I know that your free zone is at the center of this next to the airport. Uh, this is a unique opportunity. What else can you tell us on this before we move on with Walla and we look a little bit deeper onto the science and technology park, uh, Mr. Abdul Hadi? Like you mentioned, Qatar Airways is one of the local champions which strengthens our geographical advantage. Qatar Airways is one, Hamad International Port is the other. We also have a lot of uh, third-party logistics providers which work even out of the free zone, which help connect our investors to the rest of the world. So for example, you could have a, a client, let's say, who, who the sole market is in Europe, but their manufacturing is in East Asia. You can cut their their supply chain costs in a large amount just by moving them from east asia to the middle east mm. Mm. so there's a lot of advantages in play here for manufacturers for 
people that are looking to store and and just like you said have Qatar a hub a logistical hub in the region mm. to operate out of so i think that's Excellent. that's a main point Excellent. here to look at and focus on perfect wala anything to add on on this topic or uh, maybe i may raise another point or anything that you would like to add to to this side of the conversation no we can move on okay so so again on the science and technology park what i like about this discussion is that we have sort of three different op offers uh science and technology what's what's the emphasis that is the qatar is playing on on science and technology why is this an important element for the country and what kind of companies are you attracting into into your free zone what, what kind of examples you can give us uh, so we are um, we're looking for technology companies in regardless of, of the field that they're in, but we would like companies to come here that were, are here to solve national problems uh, that are strategically coming to Qatar to, 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 to help the economy, uh, bring talent, retain talent um, in the country. Uh, QSCP provides companies the full range of services and expertise to allow them to innovate in the market through our free zone. Um, and uh, we complement QFC, QFCA, um, and all our other partners. Uh, we don't, we're, it's, it's, a, it's, it's very clear our mandate from the beginning. While a lot of companies here began with R&D, especially in the oil and gas sector, we have a lot of the member companies here like ExxonMobil, Total, Shell, Rosneft, uh, but we also have uh, some of, of the greatest uh, tech companies like Microsoft and Cisco, uh, Iberdrola from Spain. Um, QSTP is, is unique in the sense that our free zone only focuses on, on tech dev um, and that we have our, our support programs. Uh, in terms of licensing and registration, uh, we don't charge a fee for licensing and registration. We really do look for companies that will complement our ecosystem and will be part of the bigger Qatar Foundation story and part of our startups and part of the economic growth. Uh, companies get 100% foreign ownership. They're exempt from taxes, income tax, custom duties. Uh, there's no restriction on uh, repatriation of any capital, profits or salaries. We have um, an on-site tier three uh, data center with hosting and cloud services. We have advanced fiber optic uh, network. And uh, you mentioned earlier, I think people were asking about the registration process. It's, it's super easy for us. Everything is done in-house. Um, it begins with a simple initial application where you outline your activities, uh, your implementation strategies, your projects, your investments. Uh, once it, it um, fulfills the entry criteria, it goes to our board of directors for approval. And then once it's approved, it goes to the licensing and registration, which is all done in-house. Um, Companies do need to engage with the government, with the Ministry of Interior and other local authorities that are outside of our control. But otherwise everything is done um, in QSTP and it just comes down to leasing the office that they require, whether it's a 45 square meter unit or a shell and core 500 square meter unit. We're getting some really good co comments and, and questions. Uh, uh, I skip now, it says, uh, who is it? Esme saying, I love that the country's strategy is focused on problem uh, solving uh, some of the, of the nation's uh, problems. Uh, I was surprised, but so you said the licensing is free at the Qatar um, Science and Technology Park. What are some of the requirements then? Is it people need to take office space? Do they need to, there are certain minimum requirements of, of, of the, the, the size of a company that you are looking to, to host at your, at your free zone? Uh, we are looking for companies of all sizes, uh, startups, SMEs, MNCs. Uh, we can license four main activities. So product and technology development, research and development, technical consultancy, and technical training. Mm. So if you fall within those four activities and you're here and you want to develop your technology, this is the home um, that you need to look at. Mm. Uh, office spaces, like I said, we have 45 uh, square meter units that can take up to six workstations. And these are for our um, companies that require less space. We also have larger companies that look for 500 square meters or more of Shell and Core, where they can build their testing facilities, labs, um, or they can use it as office space. So just to get an idea, how many companies have you licensed over the, over the last three years? Over the past three years, I think uh, over 120. Currently, we have 75 um, uh, companies incorporated. 
of which 25 are local startups. Mm -hmm. And for those that don't really understand or haven't been there, I mean, the whole sort of area and the campus of the Qatar Foundation and the universities that have set up there is, is one of a kind. What, what else can we explain to the viewers on, on this topic? Uh, we're Like I mentioned, we're very, very uh, privileged and lucky to be part of Qatar Foundation. We're part of a much, much bigger story. And um, we're a part of homegrown universities, international renowned universities, uh, research institutes, and the company that are incorporated here play a pivotal role in this ecosystem, whether it's um, whether it's helping uh, hire fresh talent from Georgetown University, or whether it's uh, collaborating with our research. We all collaborate and we all um, we all have the same vision. Mm. So it, it's, uh, the campus is huge. We have a very, very large campus, but we um, we just uh, installed our, our people rail, and so we're connected finally to the north and the south campuses of uh, Qatar Foundation. One more question that I see from the audience, they're saying, would distribution of tech hard work fall within the Qatar uh, Science and Technology Park? Would would trading of, of hardware goods fall under the, no, I think this is more no. for a- No trading. Industry. Correct. Yes, exactly, we're Correct. not a trading hub. Excellent. Thank you for that. Walla, we'll come back to you on some other okay. questions. Hamad, back to you, Qatar Financial Center. What else we can explain? We were talking about these dual options, non-regulated, regulated. How fast yeah. is it? How, how long does it take? I mean, we've done this. We have submitted many of our own clients from Creative Zone to you. We have the answers, but we would like you to explain what are the steps, what are the procedures, what are the requirements, a little bit on the fees, what more information we can give to the viewers? We have 170 people connected at the moment. Um, hello to the to the viewers um, that uh, uh, the new viewers that came in. Uh, thank you for the question, uh, Lorenzo. Um, really, uh, Qatar Financial Center uh, um, is uh, one of the oldest, let's say, um, zones or, or licensing uh, platforms. Um, also, it was established in 2005. Um, now, we are not a free zone. We are a special economic zone. Now, what does that mean is we are, an, so, so companies that are registered in the Qatar Financial Center are considered onshore. So they're not considered offshore. They are also by law treated as a Qatari company and they're not treating, treated as an offshore company. Um, that opens many benefits actually, um, especially with companies that are interested in doing outside, like doing business outside of Qatar, um, there are many tax advantages, uh, double taxation agreements. Uh, um, if, if your company, for example, is uh, set up in Qatar, it may be treated as resident of Qatar. What, the, what does that mean for business? Especially for investment companies that, that are invested abroad and they want to maybe, um, they don't want to open a company in Bermuda or Cayman and be flagged as you don't know. You know, you don't, they don't want to maybe ruin their reputation. They want uh, to set up, a, a, let's say, a, a legitimized company. Qatar Financial Center, um, they can actually um, uh, have, like, have a tax efficient structure whereby they can use our um, uh, double taxation agreements. Depending on the country they're doing business, they may qualify of paying maybe 10% tax in Qatar and not pay 20 in Europe or maybe more. Um, let's see in, in somewhere else. Also, like like with tax, I'd prefer to take it on a one by one discussion. I'm not an expert in tax. I'd prefer to meet the company individual, understand their needs, and and uh, go forward. In terms of business registration, really, it like we it takes as little as five business days of setting up. Although if you want to set up a bank, that takes up to maybe six months. So it really depends on what type of company um, you want to register. We can register around 40 plus uh, type of activities. Uh, we have a broad range of activities um, uh, from professional services. There are around 30 plus activities, um, uh, non-for-profit structures such as business councils. Most actually all of the business councils um, like uh, uh, registered in, in Qatar is registered through KFC. Uh, you have U.S. Business Council, uh, German, uh, Sp Spanish, so you name it, all are registered in the QFC. Um, the fees also 
I cannot because because we range like we license a range of companies. I cannot say what you know. It it can go as little as five hundred dollars a year. It can go as much as fifteen thousand dollars a year. It really depends on uh, what structure uh, uh, you can establish. Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember exploring with with you in the past that family offices have also become of interest for for Qatar Financial Center. Correct. This has become a very sort of uh, up and coming industry, we might call it. How, what is the role that Qatar is playing in, in sort of uh, being a hub for family offices in the region? Mm -hmm. Actually, family offices uh, is, uh, is, is a structure where, um, you know, you can, how can I say, um, treat your family or, or for families that want to structure their wealth. Uh, they don't want their wealth to squander. So they register it under an LLC or we call it a single family office. Um, I think it's a very wise uh, move uh, to do. It's a very organized way of uh, managing uh, the wealth of a family. Um, we have registered around, uh, I think, uh, a f a several, a s several family offices here um, from local family offices to international family offices. Um, what's even good about the family office really is one thing I did not mention is um, really the rule of law is what makes investors or companies um, comfortable. And this was taken into consideration, you know, back in 2005 when QFC was established is we are under uh, English common law. English common law is very familiar with, uh, with international lawyers. It's very familiar with, uh, you know, uh, international companies, you know, being, uh, an Arabic speaking country, the, the, the Qatar state law, uh, I mean, is, is a bit difficult for, for international companies because it's in Arabic. Um, so I think this is uh, one of the key um, elements we have incorporated at the outset to make, I mean, how can I say business friendly. Uh, one more mm -hmm. thing I wanted to mention is we noticed that we, we and also Qatar, uh, Invest Qatar, try to make the investor journey as much as possible, like easier as much as possible. Um, and at the Qatar Financial Center, we have incorporated, let's say, all the government, uh, you know, so, so you know, in, in basic English, uh, a, a company that's set up under the QFC does not need to go to any government entity um, other than QFC. So we have a migration um, incorporated, you know, in the QFC Tower 1, so all your visas are issued there. We have a tax office in QFC Tower 1. So all your tax-related matters um, are also there. So really, we try to um, enhance the, the, the business experience for, for international companies. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was part of this journey. And, and uh, when we set up our company there, we went through the issue of issuing visas, opening bank accounts. And I was very pleasantly surprised to see the, the smoothness and the efficiency on the whole process, even in when it comes to banking, banking has been a bit of a, of a problem in the region, if I if I could say, where it's become more and more difficult. But Qatar has has solved this uh, quite nicely. I mean, banks are open; they receive your application, and within a, a week or so, your bank account is open. So, thank you for that, Hamad and Abdul Hadi. Back to you, Qatar Fees on Authority. A, a lot going on at the Qatar Fees on Authority. What else can we tell investors looking at options uh, when it comes to where to set up? I, I was part of the free zone in, in a recent trip. I was very surprised by the sort of warehousing options, the kind of land that is available. Uh, wh what examples can you bring of, of the type of companies that have been setting up with you in the last year or so? Well, just to touch up on that, uh, the free zone offers several asset classes, firstly, to be a company in the free zone, you're going to have to have both a valid license and a valid lease with Qatar Free Zone Authority. The different asset classes we offer go from a smart desk, which is access to a smart desk here in our headquarters for five hours a week, to a 13 square meter office, fully fitted office. And then we go to the bigger options, which is what you touched on a little bit, the light industrial units, which are the pre-built warehouses for investors to come in and basically it's a plug and play option. They plug in their, either their assembly line or their storage uh, layout that they would need and they will start uh, their operations through that. And our biggest options is the minimum of a 10,000 meter square meter plot of land for the investor to develop. 
And we have, so the startups usually come with us and look for either a smart desk or an office. And you have the more established companies such as the GWCs, the DHLs who come for a full plot of land, which they're looking to develop and move a part of their operations to that site. Mm. Mm -hmm. So different options for different, for different companies and their needs really. And traditionally, what, what markets have become more interesting for, for Qatar? Are you seeing companies coming from all over the world? Is it mainly Europe? Is it from the Middle East? Is it from Asia? Is it from the US and the Americas? All over the world, honestly. We're getting a lot of companies from Europe, America as well, Asia. It depends mainly on the sectors. We, I think we, we could better look at them in the sectors. We're having a lot of companies coming in the logistics sector the maritime sector, and a lot of companies coming in for manufacturing. We have a close relationship with QP and the Tautain projects. Mm. So we're, we're, we're mainly focused on sectors rather than regions, I'd say. Excellent, excellent. Good, good. Well, um, there is a lot of good questions. Maybe at this time, I would like to ask our tech team to include uh, our landing page. We have a landing page for anybody that would like to learn more information about setting up a company and learning more about the different jurisdictions. As people can see, there's various options, the different jurisdictions. There's a different angle and approach for every type of investor, whether you're an entrepreneur, uh, an SME, uh, a medium sized or a large company. Uh, each of the jurisdictions have a different appeal and something that suits uh, every, every need. Uh, we're slowly getting to the end of, of the session. We have about 12 minutes left. Maybe I would slowly like to, like to get into, into sort of the final comments and the rounding up of, of ideas. Maybe Walla, I will start with you. What, what, what would be your final comments of, of today's session? What would be your summary? It's very clear that Qatar is making it very appealing and is doing an extra effort for making these very interested, interesting for investors to come in. But, but what's your final conclusion for today? Um, I think that a lot of great things are coming this way. I think with um, the incredible achievement of the World Cup and um, the hosting of the Asian Games and all the amazing activities that Qatar is going to be participating, whether it's in mega projects with our GCC countries, you know, regarding, you know, pipelines or the expansion of the infrastructure, Qatar is booming. Um, I think the World Cup has taken up a lot of our, our efforts. But um, I think we're all ready for the next chapter. And I think um, there's, there's, there's a, a huge potential for investment in the country in the next coming months. I, I agree. And, and as you're rightly saying, uh, the, this new phase that the country is going through, especially for the World Cup. My first time in Qatar was in 2006 for the Doha Asian Games. I mean, I can't believe uh, so much has passed on already. And what I've seen, sort of the change that the country has gone through and and back then, I remember people talking about this incredible development and people were saying everything is going to collapse after this because it's been so much infrastructure and how you turn some of the stadiums into, into some of the top end uh, hospitals in the end. And similarly, these are some of the projects that you have on how you're going to be reconverting the city from the, from the stadiums into, into other types of infrastructure. But definitely really interesting times uh, ahead for Qatar, I can assume, right? Yes, yeah, Good, good. Hamad, your final two cents for today, your summary, your final thoughts and conclusion? I think um, really the, the, the country is really growing. Um, it's developing rapidly. Um, talent is always required either by your services. It's really, it's not about come to Qatar, but why are you not doing business in Qatar? Good point. It's a good way of saying why, why not to be in Qatar? There, there is, though, it's true that there is a, a, an important, I wouldn't call it competition, but in the, within the region, you know, there's several stake, stakeholders trying to convince investors to come to, their, 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 to, the, to the countries. How, how is Qatar dealing with this? Um, I, I think I, I cannot speak really on behalf of Qatar, but my opinion is really um, each country uh, is unique. Um, Qatar cannot be Dubai. Uh, Qatar cannot be Singapore. Every country has its own uh, specific issues. Every country ha has its own specific benefits. It may make sense for a company 
let's say that has a major client in Qatar, it may make sense for them to, to uh, land in Qatar, set up a company in Qatar, and then expand slowly um, in the region. It may make sense for, for a company to, to start up in Dubai because they have a big client there. But it, it really depends on, on the company. Mm -hmm. Very well said. Thank you, Hamad. And uh, Abdul Hadi, your final thoughts for today and your conclusions? I think, I think Hamad made a great point there in the end. I think what you should look for and what companies should look for is their situation, analyze it, what's the best location for them, which country offers them the best perks. Like we mentioned, Qatar offers its a geog a geographical advantage. It has the infrastructure in place. I think something which we didn't mention, which I, I get a lot of feedback from investors that recently moved to Qatar was the quality of living in Qatar, the quality of life in Qatar for people to live. I think Qatar is up there and one of the best in the world in terms of quality of life, safety. So they need to see what best suits their business and what best suits their needs. And not only that, I think it's important for it to be a win-win situation for both parties, for both the zone and the investor. They need to bring something to the table, which, for example, Qatar Free Zone doesn't really have. Either bring in, either bring in a new company which is going to establish an ecosystem or certain networking opportunities for our existing investors in the zone. So it being a win-win situation is is best outcome for both parties, I think. Excellent, very well said, uh, Abdul Hadi. Thank you so much for that. And uh, yeah, to all the participants, to all the attendees, 180 people connected throughout the session. We would like to thank you all. Sorry, we couldn't read everybody's uh, questions. We included our link there. Uh, we're going to be sharing the full uh, recording of today's session. We're going to be sending a write-up of the main conclusions taken from today and send all the main points of contact for all the attendees to reach out to our colleagues here on the panel and to their institutions in case that you would like to ask more questions on how to set up businesses in, in their own jurisdictions. But once again, to all the attendees, we would like to thank you for taking part of this. And to the panelists, uh, Walla, Hamad, and Abdul Hadi, thank you so much for your time for today. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks bye again, bye. everybody. <laughs> thank you all. And we'll see you in the next one. And we will be in touch. Thank Thanks you. again. Bye -bye. See you all soon. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.